morning, everybody. It's nice to have you with us today. Um, so we are in CPH's Enduring Faith curriculum, and we are on Unit 3, Lesson 14. Now, as a reminder, parents, there is a supply list on the front of every curriculum. Make sure to hit pause, gather those supplies before we start, and that'll help you uh, through the full curriculum. Now, we have a guest with us today who's going to open us in prayer, and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hello. Surprise. Hi, everybody. St. Luke's families and kiddos. It's Miss Gretchen. Um, I miss hanging out with you and singing with you and worshiping with you, and I hope you're all doing well. So I have a prayer here um, that we'll say together, and it's pretty fitting for uh, these times. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, you hold our future in your hands. Help us to trust in your eternal care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Gretchen. All right. So, everybody, we are going to be starting with our green curriculum. So this is for our sixth graders uh, to twelfth graders. If you don't have the green curriculum, that's okay. You just start off with the curriculum that you have. We're going to be doing our launch section first. That's your very first section. Um, now, parents, this is going to be a really great discussion starter uh, between you and your kids. It is talking long-term plans. So, together as a family, you can do this with pieces of paper, or if you want to just discuss, that's fine too. But you're going to brainstorm and talk about what you think things would look like differently in the next 5, 10, or 15 years. And you want to spend time uh, talking about this. And it can be hard for kids to really think long term, especially when you're talking 15 years. But that's okay, parents. Um, encourage that. Um, encourage that discussion. Because a big part of this lesson, uh, when we talk about uh, revelations, is when we usually think of heaven, we don't think of it like being right around the corner, even though it could be. The idea is, is that uh, you want to start getting them in that mindset of what could the future hold, because future is heaven for us. Now, after you've had that discussion, with your family, you're going to uh, answer these two questions. What are the biggest changes that you personally look forward to in the next five, 10, and 15 years? Again, spending time on each of those three time frames. Second question, what future changes are you most concerned about? And again, spend time with each of those three time frames. Spend time talking about this, and parents, please share what your thoughts are for the things that uh, you could see changing that maybe you're excited about, and things that you possibly see changing that's a challenge. So, discussion time, okay, families? Now, we are going to go on to our yellow curriculum, and uh, this is for our kindergarten through fifth grade. And uh, this one will require your Explore Bible guidebooks. So if you don't have those, make sure to get them. Now, families, you're going to be exploring the Bible narrative aloud. Um, and you're going to read it out of your Explore Bible guide. And spend some time um, talking with your kids, understanding the uniqueness of John's revelation, because we don't have anything like this uh, in scripture. And something to really uh, talk about is that John is using human language, and that's finite, <laughs> uh, that's small, compared to uh, heaven, 
God, uh, eternity. Uh, so it, it's, it's limiting in how John could describe all these wonderful things that he's seeing in heaven. So again, while you're talking about this with your kids, just uh, spend some time with this. It's a really unique book. Now, you have two activities, and one can be for your younger learners, and one is for older learners. And just if you have, uh, you know, your own kids, obviously you can gauge uh, where they are, and maybe you have multiple kids in this age range. So pick and choose um, which of these you think will work best, or if you think both will, then do both, <laughs> okay? More time in God's Word is never a bad thing. <laughs> so to start off with the younger learners, parents, talk to them about two words. One of them is exile, the other one is revelation. Now depending on how young your students are, they may have never heard these words before. So maybe you pull out the dictionary and talk about it. Uh, maybe parents, you give a summary of it. Uh, maybe you ask your kids what they think these words might mean. Um, and talk about why these words are important to uh, this true Bible narrative. And again, we want to focus on the true aspect of this because what they're reading, it can sound magical, mystical, um, almost like a fairy tale. Um, and we don't want that uh, to be what sticks in our kids heads as this uh, magical place that doesn't exist. Um, heaven very much exists. And we want to uh, reinforce that this is really <laughs> real. This is something that they get to look forward to. Now for our older students, um, you are, you've got uh, some readings to do in Revelations uh, chapter 21 and then chapter 22. Um, and talk about this idea of the new heaven and the new earth. Um, and there might be some terms in there that they don't know or don't understand. So spend time, ask them if there are any words that they don't know. Uh, that'll help uh, you parents gauge uh, what they're understanding. And then you're going to talk about Genesis chapter 3 in uh, the Garden of Eden and the Trees. So again, spend time talking about uh, the tree that was in the Garden of Eden um, and then the tree that we hear about in Revelations. What's the same? What's different? Okay. And then here are your discussion points, families. So first off, heaven is a place without what? So it's without fear, without sorrow, without tears, mourning, pain, okay? The list, right, goes on and on and on. So that seems like it's be beyond what we could understand um, because we always experience those things. Um, and now we talk about in Revelations, this new creation um, and what it'll be like. So, uh, again, spend time talking about with uh, your kids what that would be like, what that new uh, world would look like. Okay, two. So the other thing it talks about in the reading is a world without the sun or the moon. Okay, really, and that's a part of our everyday life. We always see the sun and usually always see the moon. So we depend on these uh, two big bodies in space <laughs> for a lot of things. Um, but in the new creation, the Son of God will be the light for eternity. So again, spend some time talking with your kids about what it would be like without seeing the sun every day, without having the moon there, um, and instead always uh, seeing Jesus. Okay, now here's the next part. You've got the faithless sinners, and that's an important part to talk about, this idea of the faithless sinners, um, because it, everybody sins, right? 
So we don't want to necessarily scare uh, the kids with thinking, oh, because I've sinned, I don't get to go to heaven. No, that's, that's not the case. It's the faithless. So they don't believe in Jesus. Um, they've turned against God. They've said, no, thank you. Um, and that means that they're excluded from the new heaven and the new earth. Um, and they are uh, given over to the lake that burns with fire. And this idea that only the faithful will spend um, eternity in God's presence is an important part of our whole Christian faith. Um, so parents, my encouragement is uh, don't shy away from uh, talking about heaven and hell. Uh, they're both real places. Um, and that is, um, it, it, you know, it's not a fairy tale. It's not something that we just uh, want to gloss over. So uh, depending on the age of your kids, uh, choose how in depth uh, you want to go with that. But you need to at least uh, broach the subject with them. Uh, and then finally, uh, the angel shows John uh, the river of life, and it runs through New Jerusalem um, along with a river that um, goes to the tree of life, um, and it has 12 different kinds of fruit. Really cool, right? <laughs> the tree with 12 different kinds of fruit. Um, and unlike the tree in the Garden of Eden, there's no longer any need to separate us from that tree um, because we are with God for all eternity. And the other interesting thing is that this tree gives different fruit each month. Um, and it shows that God continually provides for our needs, even up in heaven, okay? Just because we're in heaven doesn't mean that God suddenly stops caring about us or taking care of us or protecting us. Um, so he's still doing all that for us while we're in heaven. All right, so that was <laughs> our yellow curriculum. Now we are on to our red. Uh, so this is for our preschoolers. And again, if you don't have uh, the red one, then you do the live section that's in your uh, specific curriculum. Now, uh, parents, to start the live section, you are going to need your Discover leaflets. Now, usually we would send uh, one home for you to do, but obviously, <laughs> you're home. So do both sides, I uh, or do both pages. I'm going to go through the first page, but you know what, just hit pause when we're done with this, um, and then uh, before we go on to the leave section, um, and, and you can do that second page with your kids uh, right, right there and then. So going into this uh, Discover Leaflet, um, you're going to do uh, side one first. And that has a part where the kids can uh, color in this river um, and fruit and spend some time talking about how God will make the new heaven and the new earth for us to live in forever. Uh, and it can be a really hard concept for the little ones to grasp uh, what forever means, right? We tell them to uh, go to time out for uh, five minutes and it feels like forever to them. Um, but we want to introduce this idea of eternity with God, uh, forever with him. And as we get to talk about um, this, then as they get older, uh, they've heard it before. Um, they know what it is that we're talking about. And that means we can go into more depth as they get older. Um, so it's, and again, as we're talking about this heaven and this eternity, um, talk about how it's a, a beautiful place. It's a wonderful place to be and how we're going or who we're going to see there. We're going to see God. We're going to see Jesus. We're going to see angels. We're going to see uh, family members, loved ones um, who are in heaven. And you know what? If your um, family has experienced uh, a loss of a believer, then 
talk about how they're going to see uh, that grandpa or grandma or uh, whoever that loved one is up in heaven. So we're trying to take uh, some uh, one or something uh, that's concrete and put it into a into a, a place that um, is not so concrete in our in, in their little heads yet. Okay. Now side two. Here we go. So you're going to uh, connect the dots. Ask them what it makes. And guess what? It makes a house. And you get to talk about how Jesus loves them, how he has a home ready for them, uh, for their family, for their friends. Then you're going to color in the people and uh, draw uh, them. In, uh, get, they, the kids get to draw themselves into, uh, draw in their family and talk about how Jesus loves them so much that he died for them that he rose for them, that he paid for their sins, and that Jesus promises. And remember, reiterate to the kids, Jesus doesn't lie. Everything he promises is true. That anyone who believes in him will live with him forever in heaven someday. And he also promises that God's going to make a new heaven and a new earth for us. And the other thing is, we don't know when this is going to happen. Um, and we don't know exactly what it's going to look like. But what we do know is that it's going to be wonderful. So again, parents, talk about that. What's going to be so wonderful in heaven? Now, uh, there's a part on the right side of the page. And ask them, who do you see? Jesus. And then you're going to add a sticker of Jesus sitting on the throne. Um, and guess what? God's angels are going to be in heaven too. So you're going to add the angel stickers. And then you talk about who else is going to be there. And let the kids answer. And hopefully by this point you've talked about who else is going to be in heaven. And you get to talk about how there's going to be no more crying, no more hurt, no more tears. Everyone's going to be happy. So then you're going to find happy faces on the page and ask the kids to circle them. And then people will praise and thank God um, and do other happy things. So what other happy things can you think of, can the kids think of? So spend some time and talk about that. Hit pause on this video, um, and then we're going to move into the engage in active learning part. All right, so there are three options uh, for you to do for the engaging learning. One of them is a move, one of them is a snack, and one of them is a create. Now, Parents, you gauge uh, with your kids which one you want to do. Maybe you want to do two. Maybe you want to do all three. It doesn't matter, but at least pick one uh, to do. Make sure you've gathered the supplies ahead of time. And, you know, spend some time having fun with your kids if you choose to uh, create the angel or make the snack or um, do the movement. doesn't matter, but just have fun with your kids. Now, finally, you want to make sure to spend some time checking your kids' understanding. Um, now, that means you're going to be asking open-ended questions uh, that allow you to help gauge the kids' understanding of um, heaven. And you could ask them to tell about what uh, their favorite home uh, with Jesus would be like. And you could talk about, uh, you know, what do you think uh, the sky will look like or what do you think people will wear? Uh, those are uh, examples of open-ended questions. So remember to reassure kids that this is something that Jesus has promised um, and that all believers uh, will go to heaven forever with God and will live with Jesus in this new heaven and this new earth. 
where everyone is going to be happy because for our younger ones, we want to uh, paint heaven as this uh, wonderful, happy place, which <laughs> it is. And that's something we want to convey to all ages. Now, finally, our leave section, and this is going to be with our blue curriculum, which is for our adults. And I <laughs> chose this one because I feel like it's uh, pretty applicable uh, for where we are right now in society. Uh, now, again, if you uh, want to spend the leave section in your kid's curriculum, then feel free. But here we go with the adults. So your final reflection is consider how John's visions of the new heaven and the new earth impacts your life today um, as we wait for the restoration of all things. Oh my. <laughs> so I feel like that's um, a pretty big question when we talk about what life looks like right now. Um, we're definitely, I mean, every day, <laughs> right, we see um, sin and the fall having a huge impact in our world, um, even if it wasn't with this virus that's running. Uh, we see it in uh, sickness, in death. Um, I think the difference has come is that now um, it's, this virus has taken away what some uh, would have considered um, safe. Uh, this idea that, you know, well, it could be anywhere. Uh, we don't know. You know, the doctors can't make us well. Um, so there's, I feel like that's where the, the turn is happen. It's the uncertainty, the fear in that. Um, now, considering John's vision of the new heaven, the new earth, how does that impact your life today? Um, I think for me personally, um, and I want you to spend some time talking about it at home. What, how does that impact how you live life for today as you wait for the restoration of all things? Um, I think for me, um, it's a, a big impact on the conversation of resurrection and that um, we know that we were never promised <laughs> to live forever in this earth on this time. Um, we knew that death was always coming, uh, whether it was going to come from a virus, uh, come from a car accident, uh, come from uh, old age, uh, you know, Death is just a part of our understanding of this world now. Um, and what I really don't want to have happen is the fear of death or this virus um, to take away from the powerful words of the reassurance that we have in the resurrection, in our resurrection, that because of this virus, um, Jesus's death and resurrection, you know, that's still where we hold on to, where we lay all of our trust in. Um, and that's what should um, dictate how we live our lives, knowing that we get to look forward to uh, this uh, resurrection and this new life with God. Um, so, you know, every person is going to uh, vary or differ on how they think uh, that should be lived out, um, but 
I guess what I'm getting down to is that this reassurance, this knowing that a new heaven and new earth and the resurrection is coming for me, and that is something that I am promised, uh, means that I am not going to live in fear of death um, because uh, death for me is just the door at which I get to walk through to get to my final destination, um, heaven. Um, so that's the, uh, the leave section of this. Um, but again, feel free to talk about this um, at home. And that's all I got. So <laughs> we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.